10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, liftoff. Vehicle is pitching down right here. Those of you just joining us, you are watching a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it ascends through the atmosphere carrying the SpaceX Dragon 2 capsule to vehicle orbit. Is super the vehicle just passed through max Q, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. As you can hear in the background, the excitement at SpaceX headquarters is unbelievable here. Coming up at T plus two minutes and 35 seconds is going to be I'm three events in, in quick succession. The first one is going to be the main engine cutoff, or MECO. That's when the nine Merlin 1D engines that you can see on your screen right now uh, will cut off uh, shortly before a stage separation at two minutes and 38 seconds. Shortly after that, the Merlin vacuum engine on the bottom of the second stage of the Falcon 9 will ignite in what we call second engine start, or SES. That'll be at two minutes and 46 seconds. So stand by for main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start coming up in just about 20 seconds from now. As you can hear from the cheering here at SpaceX headquarters, uh, we did have a successful main engine cutoff, a stage separation. And uh, as you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, that second, uh, second stage engine is currently started and accelerating Dragon towards orbit. On the left-hand side of your screen, that is a view from the first stage as it makes its way back down towards the Earth. Stage one, FTS is safe. Stage one, entry burn has started. Look at that plane. So three M1D engines reigniting. Burn is going to continue on for about another 18 or so seconds. Yeah, so a little back-to-back -back action now as we see stage one coming back down towards Earth. Stage two still making its way up into outer space. The dragon still nestled on top, getting ready. Stage one, entry burn, yeah. shutdown. There's the end of that stage one shutdown. Okay, so stage one is going to continue to coast its way down using those grid fins for attitude control and steering. Next and in just under a minute. Ah, that's right. It's coming up in about 10 seconds. Invex throttling now for Seco. Stage one is trained. And we have had a successful shutdown. Invex. All right. Stage one landing burn is supposed to start. At the start of that burn, stage one would be traveling at 275 meters per second. That single engine burn is going to bring that from 275 to zero. We did just hear that stage one landing burn has started. All right, let's see if we 
we get it? about 500 kilometers away from where it launched from. The vehicle will now undergo its safing procedures, and the recovery team will make sure it's strapped down and it'll make its way back to Earth. Or, sorry, back to <laughs> Cape Canaveral. It's already on. So, there's still a lot more to go here. Uh, we have Dragon Separation coming up. Let's go back to Tom Perderio to cover that next big milestone. Wow, what a landing uh, coming up very shortly in just about 20 seconds here. Uh, the Dragon spacecraft is going to be separating from the top of the Falcon 9 rocket. Separation should be occurring around 11 minutes and 5 seconds, just about now. Let's wait for confirmation. Dragon, separation confirmed. And there it is. You're looking at a view from the top of the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. And uh, hard to make out in the uh, shadow of the Earth, but that is the Dragon 2 spacecraft uh, flying in space for the first time after a successful separation. You are looking at a live view of the Dragon spacecraft as it approaches the International Space Station for a planned docking in just under two and a half hours from now. Uh, that light you can see on your screen is indeed the Dragon 2 spacecraft from a view on the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston. You are getting a live view of the Dragon spacecraft uh, now just about 3,000 meters away uh, from the International Space Station. At this time, the International Space Station about to enter into an orbital nighttime, 266 statute miles above the Earth, uh, just south of Australia. Again, about to enter an orbital nighttime. You'll see the views get a little bit darker. All right, and so this is our first view from the camera on Dragon. So this is a forward view, so right on the end of the nose, well, right where the nose cone used to be, no longer covering it, but right by the docking port uh, for the Dragon spacecraft. So that's actually a view back at the International Space Station. Uh, right here you can see the, uh, over, the overlay that the crew would be seeing if they were inside Dragon right now. Um, there is a little green dot in the very center uh, that's currently tracking the docking port. And uh, if Dragon tilts away from it, it should stay tracked. Uh, but right now, since we're getting this on the ground, uh, it's this, this would normally be overlaid over the centerline camera. Right now, we're getting this uh, feed from a different camera that's a little bit off center. So it's not going to be uh, exactly on all the time, but it will uh, simulate what a Dragon uh, astronaut would be seeing if they were in the commander seat on those touchscreen displays. Uh, and on your screen, you can. You can see the, uh, the Draco thrusters uh, firing of that Dragon. Right now it's a little uh, bright, the, the contrast is a little off, but you can see the, uh, uh, every time one of those Draco thrusters fires, uh, you can see its exhaust gases spewing away from the Dragon. Uh, it's a great view right there. It is. It's, it's great to get some views from the station side of Dragon, yeah. And hopefully once it gets in close, we'll get some views from those cameras right on the end of the docking adapter. But it's, it's always cool to see the thrusters fire in space too. Look at them go. Reminder that uh, Dragon is a totally autonomous vehicle. Uh, it's station keeping, it's holding its position all by itself right now. Those are all the Dragon flight computers making uh, minute adjustments whenever it feels it needs to, uh, to stay pointed and in the right position. You can start to see the uh, space station in great detail here. Um, again, this is from a view of the uh, forward media cam at the top of the Dragon 2 module. Uh, just to reiterate, this camera is not directly on the center line of the docking axis. Uh, Oh, this is a fantastic view of uh, Dragon in the sunlight from the International Space Station. Um, so normally when we're getting views from the Dragon for this webcast, you're going to be seeing a camera that's not quite on the center line, so it's a little bit off. And uh, it may not look like we're heading directly towards the docking adapter, but uh, if we're lucky enough, we might get some views from the center line camera in the very center of the hatch from the space station. And you can see us kind of heading on right in. But right now, 
Um, this is an unbelievable view from a space station. You can see Dragon 2 in full light with its nose cone open, uh, its soft capture ring deployed. Uh, you can actually start to see those three petals that I was talking about earlier on that ring, uh, 120 degrees apart. That ring is uh, extended above the hatch uh, by six hexapod arms that are all attached to Dragon by springs. Um, so that, that will be the first part of Dragon to make contact with the ISS. Uh, and when it does, those springs will uh, compress and absorb and dampen uh, any of the relative velocity differences between the space station and Dragon. Uh, so the light you're seeing is both light from the International Space Station pointed at Dragon and then the docking light, uh, which is the bright spot in the center of Dragon's hatch you can see right now. On the right-hand side, you can start to see the mechanisms uh, of the SpaceX docking system aboard the Dragon. Uh, the very first part of Dragon that will make contact with the ISS is that soft capture ring. You can see it's extended forward from the hatch of the Dragon right now. As yeah. soon as those pedals make contact, uh, latching pawls will engage and hold the pedals against the uh, opposite ones on the IDA and contact pins will depress, and we should hear the call out for soft capture achieved. Your hands off point. Copy. All right, so we're at that crew hands off point. That means we're about two meters away. Crew no, no longer sending commands, every Dragon doing everything on its own. Confirmed. Uh, you can hear the cheers behind us at uh, SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. We have confirmation of a soft capture of the Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station. Uh, you can see in your view the Dragon still moving around a little bit. Uh, that's the soft capture ring is attached to Dragon by way of six arms that are all attached to springs that help dampen the motion. The difference in the relative velocities between the Dragon and the space station. And you're probably and hearing some cheers behind us. One. We can confirm hard capture is complete. Hard capture complete.